Hey everyone, well, back tuning into today's video. We're going to have a look at weather for the next eight to ten days. In today's video, we'll also have a look at the winter. It's been a phenomenally wet winter. Actually, officially now it is the wettest uh, winter on record. Um, have a look at the stats in a moment, and then we'll have a look at what's going to be happening for the next eight to ten days. I think high pressure is going to be building back in, uh, so I think we are going to get some drier weather coming up. Uh, particularly uh, next week perhaps uh, and particularly focused for England and Wales where of course it has been uh, very very wet this winter so that'll be good news now before I get on with the video I just want to talk about the advertising this video ad store pages at gasworthies.com if you press play on the video ad you'll be supporting gasworthies.com thanks very much uh, for doing that um, running some new ads as well just underneath the video here I've got some uh, content ads uh, at the moment you can click through those ads if you're interested in any of the articles uh, that are, uh, are displaying if you want to read any of those articles click through the ads you'll go to uh, the article and you'll be able to read it. At the same time, Gasworthies will be getting a royalty fee on what you're doing. So there's several ways of uh, getting involved and helping to support Gasworthies.com. Um, play the video ad, click through the content ads, and uh, thanks very much for doing that. So, yeah, it's been a phenomenally wet winter, record-breakingly wet. We've had all the uh, statistics in, although the winter's still got a few more days to run. Uh, this isn't going to change. So for the UK as a whole, it's been the wettest uh, winter on record, and those records go back to 1910. For England and Wales, though, we've got a much older record, which goes back to 1766. And here we are. Here's the confirmation from uh, Kevin Bradshaw, the keeper of all the data at the uh, the weatheroutlook.com forum if you've never been to weatheroutlook.com forum by the way do go there uh, if you want to chat with a fellow uh, weather anoraks weather geeks it's a wonderful forum do check that out um, and thanks very much to that forum for allowing me uh, to use their page and uh, show you this information so yeah at 428.8 millimeters uh, as an as an average for uh, uh, this winter, or as a whole for this winter, uh, that uh, it does take us to the wettest winter on record. 2013-2014 is uh, now the wettest on record. It has beaten uh, the previous record, which was held in 1914-1915, which came out at 423.0 uh, uh, millimetres. Um, and this record goes back would you believe, to 1766. So it has been the wettest winter since at least 1766, possibly many years before that. There's no way of knowing uh, before that uh, how far back you'd have to go to find a winter as wet as this. But a really incredibly, uh, incredibly wet winter. And that's with February not being quite so wet. It is mainly down to January, uh, to December and January, and the first half of February, the second half of February hasn't been as wet. Now, in terms of the seasons as a whole, it isn't going to be the wettest season on record. That will remain uh, the year 2000 at 502.7 millimetres, the autumn of 2000, I should say, at 502.7 millimetres. Also, the autumn of uh, 1852 in second place uh, is safe. And uh, probably, I think it's fairly safe to say, the third ranked uh, wettest season on record, the autumn of 1960, is going to be safe. I think we're probably going to stick at the fourth wettest season on record uh, this winter, 2030-2014, uh, 428 millimetres. Although there is a little bit more rain uh, to come this week. I don't think we're quite going to beat 1960, but it may be close from the thing. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, but anyway, the wettest season on record will remain very easily uh, the autumn of 2000. But certainly in terms of winter rainfall, this has been an incredibly uh, wet winter. It's also been very mild. Uh, January saturating temperature came in at 5.7. February currently stands provisionally at 6.1. Um, I don't think that will change a lot more than that between now and the end of 
of the month. And at the end of the month, it may be subject to a very slight downward correction. So uh, whether January or February will turn out to be the kind of month of winter, I suspect it'll be January. Um, but, uh, of course, saying coldest month of the winter, uh, even that is going to be exceptionally mild. So it really has been a very, uh, very mild winter. Indeed. Not record-breaking mild, it's the rainfall that's been breaking records, but certainly the temperature has been very mild. And uh, 2014, starting off on a very warm note, it's going to take some colder weather uh, to bring that central England temperature down uh, for a year as a whole, for the year as a whole. Now, have a look at the outlook. This, these are the 5 to 10, uh, these are the 8 to 10 day 500 millibar uh, mean uh, flow charts. We've got the uh, ECMWF here on the left. The GFS is over on the right, 500 millibars, 80 pounds, please, where, where it's taking place in the atmosphere, as you know. And what's been going on through this winter, I'm sure you've seen these uh, charts before, is that we've had this very deep trough of low pressure uh, coming out of North America and uh, eastern Canada, uh, running across the Atlantic and crashing into the British Isles. We've had this trough sort of an omnipresent feature around British Isles throughout the winter. Well, now the signs on the flow charts that the trough is being pushed back up to a more normal place uh, to the north and northwest of the British Isles, which allows these uh, this area of orange to build in uh, to the south of the country. There it is. That is a ridge of high pressure. Both average heights I haven't seen much of that this winter uh, pushing up from the south into the uh, south of the British Isles anyway. We've still got quite a strong jet stream running across the Atlantic, so we'll still be niggling weather systems, particularly to the north and the northwest. We'll be bringing in uh, weather systems, but that high pressure building to the south is in a nice position. I think it will drive things out quite a lot across England and Wales. And uh, it's in a position to give us some fairly mild weather as well. I think the temperatures will be lifting up. So have a look at the generic chances for GFS for next Monday, a week away. There's the ridge of high pressure beginning to push in uh, from the southwest, from the Azores. Here it comes, building to the south of the country. As they still bring away the fronts in to the north, where the systems areas of low pressure coming to Scotland and Northern Ireland will bring some rain at times. But it's a much drier signal there for England and Wales uh, next week. I think we'll get plenty of useful dry weather if this is right across England and Wales next week. The uh, ECMWF again has that high pressure building in uh, through next week. In fact, it's more progressive building the high pressure in uh, through next week. So but it actually covers virtually the whole of the country by day 10, Thursday the 6th of March. High pressure is more or less over the top. Still perhaps bringing some weather systems to the far north, northwest Scotland, but the bulk of the country there is going to be dry. Um, and quite mild as well. We bring up some very pleasant temperatures from the uh, Azores, from the southwest. So mild, uh, dry, and mainly uh, fine weather coming up next week if the ECMWF is right. be the best week that we've had uh, for a long time. Now, the caveat is for GEM. The Canadian model, it doesn't settle things down as much. It brings another area of low pressure through on Monday the 3rd. That would take rain across the country. That low pressure sitting off the coast of East Anglia on uh, Tuesday the 4th. Look at that. That's a pretty poor chart. I'm pretty a lot of heavy rain and cold temperatures to much of England and Wales. And then by day 10, the high pressure is trying to build in from the southwest, but we're still more or less in an unsettled westerly flow. But I think this is a bit suspect. I think it's all hinging really on this very deep area of low pressure to the south of Greenland uh, next week. And that looks over the top to me. I don't think that low pressure will be as deep as that. So I think the GM more suspect I would go with the GFS and the ECMWS solutions which is to build that high pressure in. Now I've got a bit of a question mark about the end of this week when we could get some uh, wet weather. We've got this trough digging southwards across uh, the country. It's going to introduce some cooler air uh, for the weekend. I think the GFS more or less keeps the low pressures uh, to the north and to the south so probably not too wet on uh, the GFS solution uh, but quite chilly and there could be some frost over the weekend but the ECMWF is I think wetter this low pressure coming in across Ireland on Friday could bring some quite wet weather to England and Wales. Uh, that's sitting still to the south of the country through into Saturday, possibly still producing some outbreaks of rain across southern England. And if that came off, then the uh, 1960 uh, third place uh, wettest season on record that we was looking at at the start of the video would perhaps be under uh, threat, actually, if that came off. Um, and then as we go through to Sunday the 2nd, that low pressure moves off then in towards France, and we bring down this chilly north to northeasterly flow, which would be enough to produce some, uh, at least some night frost, and maybe some wintry showers around northern and eastern. 
facing coast. So we could get some uh, rain and cooler temperatures at the end of the week. Uh, but I think next week we are looking at high pressure building up from the southwest, really settling things down, hopefully, particularly for England and Wales. Always more unsettled probably for Scotland and Northern Ireland, but for England and Wales particularly, settling down. And uh, looking pretty good, I have to say, next week. So after the wettest uh, winter on record, wettest wind since at least 1766, things starting to look up as we move into March. However, there is those question marks about how much rain we'll get at the end of the week. That's it for now. I hope you found the video interesting and informative. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.